Hey guys, a lot of you have been asking me to do a review of the new Immolation record, Acts of God. Finally got around to listening to it, and uh, I'm just going to get right to the point. I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, I'll give a pretty long description why, but I'm going to start by talking about my relationship with this band. Um, I do not want to slag this band. It hurts to have to slag this band. This, is, uh, this was my first ever metal band uh, that I'd seen live. I had to have been about maybe 17 uh, and went to a club in Chicago called Jackhammers, and it was immolation one week and suffocation the next, and it was pretty much like that kind of affirmed what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be in life. Like that, it was a huge revelation, and uh, they had been still tearing off of here and after, which I bought just on a whim maybe a month beforehand because I thought the cover looked cool at a used CD shop and that was just the shit that we did. We just saw shit and jumped in and uh, I couldn't have been happier with that record. It's still a huge influence on me. Uh, one of my favorite records of all time. One of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, so I was not reeled in by their previous record, Atonement, even though they brought back the old logo. I knew what they were trying to do, trying to show us that they still have that fire, uh, still inspired, uh, but I didn't hear any of that. To me, that record felt uh, pretty, pretty hastily put together, not very inspired, uh, and you know, I, I don't really blame them. Uh, not only are they long in the tooth, but when, when the center point of your ideology is anti-Christian, and at least in the States anyway, Christianity is completely gimped, there, w what do you have to make you keep coming to the table? What is going to make you pick up your instrument? If that was your main inspiration and the war is over, what do you do? And I've, I, I've been talking to my friends about this record, and uh, a lot of them love it, and a lot of the reviews I'm seeing love it. A lot of people think this is the best, one of their best records ever. Some people are saying it's the best since Unholy Cult, and I maybe, yeah, sure, but all that the records after that were just so dismal that it doesn't say much of anything. But as for this record in particular, um, when I looked at the the two singles that they released beforehand, I could pick up on the fact that they were still trying to show that they were an aggressive band above, above all else. And they kind of did the same thing that Morbid Angel did with their last record. They could feel that uh, the fans could identify that they were not quite as inspired as they used to be. And they really wanted to show you that they have that aggression in them still. And that this is, this is one of their most aggressive records that I can recall, but it's just so uninspired for so many reasons, and it, it's disappointing to say so, because if you look at the record, I mean, there's a lot of content here. It's it's their longest ever record. It's almost a goddamn hour long. It's a, it's but even though it's so long, and has so many tracks on it, they all feel like they have the same utility. Like none of the songs particularly stand out. Uh, the way that they put the songs together all feels kind of the same. Like, if, you've, if you're an Immolation fan, you know how they build parts. You know how they build songs. And when you come up with a formula that defines who you are as a band, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But when you abuse it to the extent that it's abused here, uh, it, it really does feel completely uninspired. And if you're, it, it, if you're used to how their tonal palette works, you'll start picking up on the fact that almost every riff on this record starts with their open C and then they fill in from there and uh, they'll, they'll piece songs together in, in A, B, A, B then do something else format and you know you're going to hear that open C defining almost every passage on here and it gets really tiring and you know you don't have to change keys all over the place but uh, the, the issue with this is that this used to be a very expressive band uh, like the first few records, the songs felt natural. Like they, it felt like it was a stream of consciousness that was that made sense. And the songs had peaks and valleys, and they had identifiable characteristics. And it felt like a holistic affair where this is an immolation record. Each one of these songs matters towards the greater whole, and this record is a statement. And you don't have that here, aside from that statement being 
we're still aggressive. Check us out, guys. We could still do this shit. And that's that's not good enough for a band of this caliber. And and when every song has those kind of uh, formats being abused, you can predict where the arrangements are going to go before you hear them. And it when they when they rely so much on that open C, it, it you you can kind of put yourself in in Robert Vigna's shoes. You can you, you can kind of feel how he's going to piece these riffs together. He's going to start with that open C and fill in the rest. And that's not really an inspired way to look at your instrument, being like, oh, well, how do I start this song? How do I start this riff? I know the lowest note I have. And then we'll just go from there and, and see what happens. And uh, not only that, but the, the way the parts kind of flesh the songs out, you know you're going to get those segments where you'll have a... A, a part of the song that isn't very long, it might be a, a count of four or a count of six, and they'll, they'll end up uh, having the drums be abstract where it's like tribal and tom based. And it'll be a single guitar just playing a very simple riff, and then the drums will get a little bit busier. You'll see cymbals occur after like maybe a, a, a four uh, repeats of four, and and then Ross will come in while an octave sliding guitar goes over the top of of that riff, and they develop the riffs this way pretty much on every song. So the utility of uh, they they understand how to build climaxes, but they've done it in this kind of just singular way throughout this entire record, where they'll strip everything down to one guitar and the toms. They'll build from there, and then they'll cut into something completely unrelated or cut to just a single guitar doing a, doing a different passage and then all come in together with like a blast beat, something that's like, you know, more aggressive. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it feels, even though it feels like they went with a template, it still feels somehow haphazard, which is inexplicable here because like the, the songs, they're, they're very interchangeable. Uh, except for maybe the title track, which is uh, which has a, a pretty good climax uh, underneath the solo, not unlike what you would hear in um, the the first song on Here and After, which I've I've discussed in a, a previous video. And and when they lock into those segments where they they understand how to manipulate tones and manipulate vibes and manipulate the audience in a way where you get to this really dramatic conclusion, you know that you're hearing the immolation from the past. But those are really the only snippets when it happens. And they you know there's a couple instrumentals on here that really don't serve much of a purpose. They don't uh, end up setting a mood really that effectively uh i i don't know it just it, it, you could tell they're trying to get their trademark across to you and uh, there's things about it i do like i like that i can hear um ross's bass for like the first time ever and he sounds as vicious as he ever did uh the man just doesn't age uh with his vocals um and and i like hearing the uh, immediately identifiable Robert Vigna on guitar. I mean, it's it's him no matter what. Like you, you, even if it's him at his least inspired, it still sounds like him. Which is you know you don't you can't really say that for a lot of uh, continuing metal guitar players. It's it's just it's such a formulaic record and it's formulaic at almost an hour's runtime, and it, that's that's just brutal. It's a brutal slog to get through. Uh, I don't know. It's it, it was it was disappointing, and I, I went back through and I tried to skim through the tracks again after I I heard the whole thing, and I kept getting bombarded with that open C to like get you know most of the riff is most of the most of the record is a chugging open C with some adornments attached to it, and then they'll flesh out the songs with like a pop arrangement with some diversions here and there. And then they'll end up having uh, songs just completely peter out. Uh, there's sometimes there will be a climax that is adequately built. Sometimes the songs will just end kind of in the middle of a phrase, and it doesn't have that good kind of shock that you can get out of that. Uh, it just feels weird, and uh, I don't know. I mean, everything about the way the band is projecting itself is determined to show you that this is old immolation, like this. This record looks just like Dawn of Possession. They brought back the old logo. They're trying to make you feel like it's still them, but you know, it, it, it really is uh, just a pale shadow at this point. Uh, and you know, it makes sense. Like, how are you gonna be inspired enough to 
get the ideology across when, when since this band's existence, the, the amount of uh, Christians present in the United States dropped by almost 30%. Like, and, and you can't really, like Christians are universally pretty much loathed now in the United States. Like you can't, you can't talk about them without laughing at them or expressing disdain towards them. Like the, the battle's over, it's won. You know, maybe focus on something else and find a reason to pick up your instruments again because this just feels like they're trying to step into their old uniform and it just it's not it's not working it's working on the most superficial of levels and even while doing so it still feels like put together as as a like like they just took up a, a box of immolation legos and dumped it on the floor and and just like kind of pieced together something that was good enough and resembled what the instructions told them to do. I mean, I, it, that's what I'm getting across. It just, it really feels like it's paint by numbers immolation with more aggression to it than you're familiar with from their last previous records. And they're hoping that that'll get them to coast by much like Morbid Angel did with their last release. And it's, it's just really, it's not good enough for a average death metal band and it's especially not good enough for legends like this so that that's that's my thoughts on this record pretty disappointed uh i mean if you're gonna reach for this record it would be only to hear the occasional good riff you're not going to hear uh, a really eye-opening arrangement you're not going to hear a grandiose statement over the course of the hour-long record that it is so you're just going to be mining for uh a, the occasional good riff and that's here every once in a while, but it's that's that's not good enough. It's it's uh, it, it the the record isn't saying anything. It's not it's not projecting anything aside from we know you think we're old, but we can still hang. That's about all I'm hearing. So, thank you for listening. <laughs>